place, find out all sorts of new cultures and all sorts of new history. And one of the really, really cool things we just found out about Dunkeld is an avid artist, a world-renowned artist, for painting and drawing simple little things and telling simple little stories, such as myself, it was Beatrix Potter. And she created such things such as Peter Piper and Peter Rabbit and Mrs. Tiggy Winkle as well. It's really, really cool to see someone with such a vivid imagination can bring her characters and her creations to life in such a powerful way which can touch an entire generation, an entire generation of generations. So we're here today, guys, and we're going to do a little bit of a special on Beatrix Potter. Beatrix Potter was born on the 28th of July 1866 at number two Bolton Gardens in Kensington, London. And the Potters were a very typical Victorian family, living in a large home with servants. She was looked after by a nanny, spending most of her time at a big nursery on the top of the house, and often seeing her parents only at bedtime. When she was old enough to start lessons, the nursery was converted into a schoolroom and Beatrix was taught often by her own governess. In those days, a girl of her social class didn't often go to school. When Beatrix was 15, she began to keep a journal written a secret code of her own invention. Even Beatrix herself, when she read the back cover over in later life, found it difficult to understand. It wasn't until 15 years after her death that the code was hacked. To the outside world, Beatrice appeared as a shy and reserved person, but in her diary she was able to express herself openly, and she showed herself to be a strong critic of artists, writers, politicians of that day. As a child, Beatrix was encouraged to draw, and she spent many hours making childhood sketches of animals and plants revealing an early fascination for the natural world which she would continue throughout her life. She made realistic studies of animals and birds, but her imaginative art figure rabbits wearing bibs and mice whose paws were busy spinning and knitting and sewing. On family holidays outside London she enjoyed sketching landscapes, and although she never went to school, Beatrix was intelligent and an industry student she left a remarkable work of scientific il illustrations of fossils, architectural findings, and all kinds of other things, many of which were donated to the Amit Trust. Yes, you're quite right. I should be getting on with all those letters to the children. <laughs> Little Noel is unwell again. Poor child. Let's see if we can cheer him up. My dear Noel, I don't know what to write you, so I shall tell you a story about four little... Peter! I'll try and meet you tomorrow! Under the big fir tree! Flopsy, Mopsy and Cottontail, who were good little bunnies, went down the lane to gather blackberries. But Peter, who was very naughty, ran straight away to Mr. McGregor's garden and squeezed under the gate. I think one of the things that always struck me is, is I guess it's a good life lesson, um, I guess in the majority of the situations is that no matter how naughty Peter Rabbit was, sure um, that things always worked out in the end and, uh, and things would always be okay in the end. I remember watching these as a child and I don't think I was ever able to grasp just how powerful the images were, but also just how unique and wonderful uh, the images were that Beatrix um, created. 
and now sitting back some you know 20 years later and and getting to watch this again for for the first time is just it's just bringing back so many wonderful wonderful memories and uh, i'm really really privileged and blessed that i'm getting to see this and shoes peter mama though i shan't inquire where i am obliged mr bouncer hmm? Oh, oh, not at all. My pleasure. Only young ones, what? <laughs> Happily, all has ended well. But let it be a lesson to you, Peter. You know, Mr. McGregor never could understand how all those tiny shoe prints came to be there. nor how the cat managed to shut herself up inside the greenhouse. Locking the door from the outside. Well, guys, we've got a really special treat here and a really special guest, which I'm going to be able to reveal, hopefully. And we're going to share now the world famous... Mrs. Tiggy Winkle. <laughs> Another one of Beatrix Potter's wonderful, wonderful creations. She probably does good cooking, too. Well, guys, what you are seeing here is the location where Beatrix Potter created the wonderful frog himself, Jeremy. And you can see him sitting over there, having a wonderful, wonderful time. Still keeps an eye on everything and keeps his lily pod and his pond, well, as it should be. A happy home for a frog. And there's Peter Rabbit himself. He was a naughty little rabbit, apparently. <laughs> and all these wonderful characters. How fantastic is that? It's a cold, cold evening With a moonlit sky And we're here by the campfire Tonight Piling logs on the fire And the embers rise the stars glistening in my eyes Here we are together Sharing tales from our lives Watching the flames flicker Brings tears to my eyes there are some conversations that last a lifetime. There are some people we come across who are simply divine. Oh, never would I trade you in for smile to hide the pain you feel oh that pain is so real only on the inside 
side There I know you cry Know that I am here for you There's no place I'd rather be than here tonight Here by the campfire with the moonlight shining bright There are some conversations that last a lifetime There are some people we come across who are simply divine No, never would I trade you Some conversations that last a lifetime There are some people we come across Who are simply divine Oh, never would I trade you Guys, I really hope you've enjoyed the special on Beatrix Potter, her work, her life, and what she has done, and what she's meant to so many. Until next time, guys, stay tuned, and from all of us here at Art From The Heart, and Beatrix Potter's Gardens, in Dunkeld, take care, and God bless.